guys, welcome back to another Bible study Saturday. We have Brother Gio with us today. Today we will be continuing John chapter 5 from verses 25 all the way to 47. And to start off, we're going to do a prayer by Brother Gio, and then I'm going to be doing the ending prayer, and then we're going to get right into the word for today. Heavenly Father, hallowed be your name. Come before you this morning, your mercy seat, your throne of grace, to give you glory and to exalt your name, Lord God, to honor you. Father, you woke us up this morning, allow us to see this day that you have made, Lord God, and it is in our mind, our will, our desire. At the moment we woke up this morning was to seek your face, to get into your word, to sit at your feet, Father God. So as we seek for you, our desire is this one thing, give us you. Your word says, as we draw nigh unto you, you would draw nigh unto us. So Father God, help us to fall on your word. Allow us to enter into your presence. Holy Spirit, illuminate the scripture. May everything that we learn, Lord God, be impermeated into our heart. And may it never be robbed from us, Lord God, but may I, pr I pray that it would cause transformation, a divine transformation. Let our minds be changed forevermore and ever be in the same after reading this word. And I pray even now for obedience to do exactly what the word tells us to do. We thank you, Father God. And we pray even now, Lord God, for our brother who couldn't make it today. I pray that wherever he is, that you are with him, covering him, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Okay, so last time we left off with Jesus. Um, I believe he healed the man, told him to take up his bed and walk. Yeah. Right. And then right after that, I believe that so there was that, like that little pool area. Cause remember he healed them. He didn't know who Jesus, he didn't know that was Jesus at that time. Jesus left. Later on, he ended up telling the Jew that Jesus healed them and they got mad because you're not supposed to be doing work on the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. That's right. They try to, they threatened to like kill him, but Jesus completely ignored it and just kept talking. Just completely kept talking about something else. I don't remember exactly what he was talking about. He, so I think that what we're learning so far, just in the, the just short four chapters, that, and even in this chapter, that Jesus. Um, he's very intentional, right? The things that he does, the way he sets everything up, it all has a purpose. There's always a deeper meaning. There's always a plan to what's happening. And I think that definitely applies to our lives. Like we think we can't see what, why we're going, why we're going through the things that we're going through. But um, the Bible tells us that all things work together, right? According to the, all things work together for those who love God, right? So, Jesus, when he responds to these encounters with people who don't necessarily like what he's doing, or even those who like, who, who, who don't know who he is and he's getting ready to do something for him, we notice a pattern. Well, the pattern is he approaches the root of the problem and that root lies within the heart. And so these men approach Jesus and they're like, who do you think you are? Do something on Sabbath. Sabbath is a holy day. We're supposed to sustain and, and, and keep up the holy day. Even to today, bro, um, like you like we learned last night um, during service that this on Saturday, it's like a national holiday in Israel. They shut down. They don't do anything. The Sabbath day, they still keep. So um, now we're, we're seeing Jesus responding to them and pretty much Jesus is saying, I and my father are one. I can't do nothing of my own. I only do that which the father allows me to do. He gives me the power to do it. And they're furious. What? This man is saying he's an equal with God? Impossible. This guy is out of his mind. This is considered blasphemy. Like, no, God is God. You're not God. Don't tell me you're God. You're mad. I don't care what you're saying. You're drunk. Something's wrong. We're getting ready to take this guy's head off, right? So um, we go right into 25, right? So now we're going to dig a little deeper with um, and Jesus's response. Well, Jesus is going to dig a little deeper with his response. So it says 25. 
Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. How is the hour coming, and the hour is now? How does that make sense? Sometimes I just I just be like I be so confused by scripture, like yeah, be so lost, bro. Trust and believe. This is a process. The like, hour is coming, but the hour is now. It's coming, but it's now. It's like it's yeah, so I be confused. I be I be so confused. The crazy thing about it is. This thing is written in the form of English that we no longer use, right? The King James is English. Second thing is that Jesus just be speaking, like he tells him, he tell, we'll read it, but he speaks in parables. Like he speaks far beyond wisdom and understanding that we could ever um, comprehend. Take. Yeah, we can't comprehend it. But the beauty of it is that those who are in Christ Jesus, he gives them the ability to understand the mysteries of heaven. And he tells us that in the in the Bible, it's like, like how am I even able to understand this? So it's all about the the power of the Spirit, right? So let's break that down. The hour is coming. I want to take out the now is part, and we get back to that. It says the hour is coming when the dead shall hear shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they and they that hear shall live. So the one that's coming is when Jesus comes back. That's the judgment one, right? And when Jesus comes back and he, when he call, he's ready to call everybody back up to heaven now. So yeah. those are in the grave. Yeah, that part I get. The, the hour is now, that, don't make, that part don't make sense to me. Right, let's go back now. So it says the other part. The hour is now when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and they... They that hear shall live. So the hour is now. Jesus is on earth. The time is now for those. So when he says dead, here he's talking about spiritual death. These people are dead in their sins. He's not talking about physical death. He's talking about these people dead in sins. Like they just, they're, they're in an entanglement of their sins. <laughs> All right? Uh, yeah. these people were entangled in their sins like they they were bound they were dead in their sins they were bound by sin it was like they just could not see so he's like so they, this says when the dead shall hear the voice of the son of God and they that hear shall live so some people they're going to encounter God they're going to encounter Jesus while he's on earth but not everybody's going to hear him. Not everybody's going to pay attention to what he's saying. Right? So, but those who do hear, they shall live, is what he's saying. Okay? So, verse 26 says, For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself, and hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the son of man. So God the Father gave life to God the Son. So they that, whoever Jesus feels fit to quicken and give life back to, he can do that because the Father has given him this power to do so. And he also gave him the authority to execute judgment. Remember how we said that Jesus is going to be doing the judging on, judging on judgment day? Yes. Okay. Um, verse 28 says, marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. That's what I was just telling you. The hour is coming, right? And then verse 29, it says, and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. So this is the so this is the first part about the hour is coming. He's talking about the resurrection. And then this and then those who are going to be resurrected 
they have two options. Well, two things are going to have. They, they can either go to one place or the other. They can be resurrected unto life, like eternal life with Jesus, or they can be resurrected with eternal life in hell. It says damnation. Okay? So that's the hour that's coming. He says, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just, or in other words, for justice, fair. Because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. So you see that? He's saying that I can't do anything of my own. Even judgment, like God has given me the judgment. And I'm making sure that my judgment is fair. Like what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. And and the reason why my judgment is fair upon people is because I don't seek to judge them out of my own um out of my own like thoughts or in, like what how I feel. Instead I judge them um out of the will of the Father. This is what the Father wants. So Jesus is clearly saying his will is to do the will of his father. And that's how we should be too. Like each and everything that we do as it should be filtered through God. God, here's what I want to do. Here's what I'm thinking of doing. Is this okay? Is this a part of your will? Is this what you want from me? And if it's not, Father, I pray that you would release your will to me. Make it, reveal it. Please help me to understand it. That's all Jesus ever wanted to do. And we're supposed to be doing the same thing. And, 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 and that all happens through the power of the Holy Spirit. Think of the Holy Spirit like, like the connection between you and Jesus. So now that Jesus is not walking the earth, what came in place of him was the Holy Spirit. And he's, he's here to help us stay connected. Like that little small voice you might hear in your head, that little gut feeling you might feel, that's just not by coincidence. That's the Holy Spirit trying to nudge you and prompt you to do the will of the Father, okay? Verse 31 says, if I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true, right? So if I do anything of myself, or if I speak of myself, it's not true, right? Because he says, verse 32, there is another that bear the witness of me. And I know that the witness which he witnesses, he witnesseth of me is true. You know what he's talking about, right? The person who bear witness of him, we learned about him as his cousin. Ye sent unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth. John, remember John? Yes. Yeah. That's what he's talking about, right? He says, but I, and you know what witness is, right? Yeah. To like, to like tell a story or, or, or you know, give like a testimony. All right. So it says, but I receive not testimony from man, but these things I say that ye might be saved. He was a he was a burning and a shining light, and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. But I have greater witness than that of John, for the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do, bear witness of me that the Father hath, Father hath sent me. So he's saying everything that John said was. Okay, cool. It was good, right? But he and he, he was saying he was, um, he was for a season, a shining light. He was burning in a shining light. So for a season, everything that John had said was truth. It was light. It was it was it was supposed to get people to get on track. Sort of like our pastors on Sundays, right? For for we we, we hear what they're saying. It's supposed to uplift us and cause us to increase our faith and draw us closer to God. But here we have it, Jesus is saying, um, and the second part, in 36, he says, but I have a greater witness or a greater story than that of John. It says, for the works which the Father have given me to finish, the same works is what I do. So bear witness of me. Listen to what I'm saying, that the Father has sent me. Ezra, this is so crazy because everything that, 
can you imagine from the moment you wake up, the o- only thing you're looking to do is what Jesus asked you to do? How much trouble I wouldn't be in? <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's what I'm saying. Like, like we get up, bro. I'm guilty of it too. We get up, we just go. We just, brum, brum, pew, 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 pew. I gotta do this, I gotta do that. We, we make schedules, we make agendas, we meet up with people, we do this, we do that, we do that. We, our schedules are so full. And next thing you know, we talk, it's like 11.30 at night. And what did we accomplish for the Lord? What did we do for the Lord? Did we seek out what he wanted us to do for today? Did we speak to somebody about God? Did we pray for somebody on, on, on that the Holy Spirit was telling us to pray for? You know what I mean? Like, did, did, did we hand over some cash or feed somebody that was hungry that approached us? Do we even take the time to just not ask God for anything, but to just sit at his feet and just bask in his presence? With me, I kind of I kind of created a schedule that way I'm spending time with God during the day and also doing like what I would just regularly do. Because I have like, because I do like, let's say about like 10, 15 minutes of worship. Then I do like, like five, 10 minutes of going into the Bible. Uh, I work out. That's probably like 20 minutes. Meditate for 20 minutes. And then like read uh, like a book. So that's good. That way, um, the meditating, that really helps with like my mental health and really be able to process stuff that goes on. Mm -hmm. Which I'm so glad I started to do, cause I always, I always just try to process stuff on the go. Mm-hmm. It's the worst thing you can't you're not able to process stuff while you're doing something else. It makes no sense. You can't do it. Gotta be still. You so just lock my door and just I will either just have bare quietness and just think, or I will just put on some rain noises because that really helps me. So whatever it takes so so jesus now he, he talks about he's talking about the two resurrections right right those who who will be who will hear jesus now and like us how we did so we already we already went through our first resurrection that first one is we came out of the grave of sin right like we we're no longer living in sin like we're no longer making up our mind to go out and do something bad that we know we're not supposed to do. Instead, we're con- we're making a conscious effort to not sin. So we've been baptized with Jesus. We've been uplifted out of the, the grave of sin. And now we're walking in this newness of life with Jesus. He talks about the second resurrection, which is those who already died. And then they would have come up, hopefully, before they die. Before they had died, they would have had a relationship with Jesus. They would have accepted the Father as his Lord. They would accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And so it's important, man, that we, as long as we are breathing, bro, it's like that song said, as long as I am breathing, I will worship the Lord. I'm trying okay. to do every day to make sure I my time with God. Mm-hmm. So then. So we talk about the witness. So he talked about the witness of Jesus and what he's doing. He's talking about the witness of John the Baptist. And now in verse 37, he's talking about the witness of the Father, right? And so he says, 37, And the Father himself, which has sent me, hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. Or well, pretty much you've never seen you never seen God the Father. Mm-hmm. Um and ye have not his word abiding in you, for whom he hath sent, him ye believe not. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Jesus is saying in verse 37, the Father has sent witness of me. Like the Father put out there that I am the Messiah. And that's his word. In verse 38, he says, but you guys are not allowing the word to get on the inside of you. You're not allowing it to penetrate you and change you. And this is how I know. So it says, for him, for whom he hath sent, him ye believe not. So the Father sent Jesus, which he before time spoke of through John, 
He's John's the old, the Messiah is coming, the, 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 the Christ is coming. And now I'm here and you don't believe. You don't believe. It's, it's, it's such a tough thing, tough pill to swallow when people hear the word of God, whether they're on the train and somebody's talking about him or whether they're, and even in church, they take the time to get dressed, wake up early on a Sunday morning or whatever day they go to church and they come to church and they hear the word of God and, and, it, and it, it just it pricks them right in the heart. They're just like, oh, that hurt. I'm feeling that one. But they don't allow it to really get in there and simmer and marinate so that it causes the change that's necessary. And then by the time the service is over, they don't even... Like they just go right back to being themselves, you know, and it just it's, it sucks. But I mean, we I'm talking about people who are even far off. These people won't even accept the word of God. Like they're just like, nah, not real. You ain't the Messiah. You just a man out here who's lost his mind. So verse 40 says, and ye will not come to me that ye may have life. Like you refuse to take what the father has said. You refuse to take, to listen to the, the witness of John. And now I stand here before you and you refuse to listen to what I'm saying. You will not come to me so you could have life. In me is life. God, the father has given me life. So if you accept me, you will have life. And of course, these people are standing right before him and they're alive. So they're like, what are you talking about? What you talking about? I'm alive right now. I, I'm breathing out my mouth right now. Exactly. Like, dude, what are you even talking about? Life. Like, I'm right in front of you. But they, but again, Jesus is going to the heart, right? He's going to the root of the problem. He doesn't deal with things from the surface. And so it says, I receive not honor from men. So people, like, like I don't, I could care less if men big me up. Ezron, I could care less if I get a million followers or if I get two faithful, consistent, and committed followers. As long as I know that God the Father is happy with what I am doing, then that's all that matters. I don't need the honor of men. I need the honor from God. I need for him to honor me. And that's what Jesus is saying. He says, but I know, verse 42, but I know you, that ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. Now you get that part, right? Yeah. All right, I'm like, listen, I'm coming in the name of the Father, the name of God the Father. And I know you don't have his love in him, because if you had the love of the, for God the Father in him, then you would have known who I was and you would have received me. But let some other dude come. And, and 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 talk about he's this and he's that. You but think that's definitely gonna believe that. Yeah, you know what I mean? So it's almost like, yo, if your friend come in and talk about how big and bad he is and he got this going, he got that house, this car, or he got this many followers, and oh, you will receive him. Because those are the things that are interesting to you. But when the word of God comes and hits you in your heart and, and punches you in the back of your head and, and it's screaming loud in your ear, you choose not to perceive the word of God. You choose not to receive what Jesus is trying to tell you. Right? In verse 44, he says, how can you believe which receiveth honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? So how can you believe what this man, what a man, a, a mere man coming up to you and say that I'm this and I'm that? How can you believe what he's saying, but yet you're not believing what comes from God? It's just not making any sense. And you guys are calling yourselves these Right? It says, verse 45, do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There was one that accuses you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. For had ye believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? So now he really going in. Now he like he really just he really just ended that chapter with something with something big. 
Yeah, like like because they they really found it's called the mosaic the mosaic law, the Ten Commandments, the laws, all that stuff that came out of it, right? And that's that's really what they they followed by. Like their fo- their forefathers did everything that Moses asked them to do that God had given them. But they're not they're not connecting the dots. They're not putting two to two together. They're not realizing that, like Jesus just said, everything that God had gave Moses, he was speaking of me. He was speaking of me. And then we'll see in the scripture that later on, we'll see how, how everything that was given to Moses, all those laws that they came up after he just gave them the Ten Commandments. Like you can't mix um, dairy with meat, like like all those different types of laws that they have. Like, like Jewish people can't have cheeseburgers. Because they don't make, you know, the, the, I think it's like a law or rule that you can't have dairy and meat. So all these laws that they came with that stem from the Ten Commandments that God had given them, Jesus is going to say, we're going to read later on that. He says, if you just do these two things, you will fulfill everything that God gave Moses. And those two things is this. The first thing is you're going to love God with all your heart your soul and your mind. And the second thing is to love your neighbor as you love yourself. If you just do those two things, you will fulfill everything that God asks you to do. Love is the driving factor. The reason why is because love, real love, true love is an action. It causes you to do things just the God the Father loved us so much, which I still can't figure out why. I have no idea why that guy loves us so much. I mean, I know, but I mean, he tells me why, but it's just like, we don't deserve it. We don't deserve it, bro. We slap him in the face each and every chance that we get, man, with with our ill decisions and poor judgment and, and just not seeking him, not spending time with him. I remember him that he gave us life. Like the next breath that we're getting ready to take is because of his mercy, because of his grace. And 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 that's the real definition of love. So when we find ourselves saying we love another person, right? It says that we have, we ought to love them as we love ourselves. So I need you to even take that into your your marriage when you get there. Love your wife. As God loved the church, that's what it says. <laughs> happy wife, happy life. That's it, man. It's that unconditional love, bro. So Jesus just dropped the bomb right there. You don't even believe in Moses. You you living your whole life following this Mosaic law, and you don't even believe what Moses is saying. Because if you did, you would have believed, you would have understood that he was talking about me. And here I stand before you, and you ain't even listening to what I'm saying to you. I came to fulfill all that Moses has said. I am the fulfillment of the law, of the commandments. I'm guessing they, they need Jesus to do a miracle onto them for them to believe the sign. And unfortunately, bro, that's the way it is for a lot of people today. Unless Jesus yeah. come down and... Yeah, unless you come down right now and speak to me, like me in person, ah, you're not getting that. Unless you part, unless you part the Atlantic Ocean that goes from New York to Africa, unless you, um, you know, cause the sun and the moon to, I don't know, flip flop or something like, is these people want something so out of this world to happen, but they don't even realize that a miracle happens every day. They really do. Waking up. <laughs> Freedom. You breathing is a miracle because you could have easily been dead, man. Easily. <laughs> Woke up dead, but nah, you good. I'm telling you, man. So definitely some good stuff today. Um man, the next time we hear a word from God from a pastor or from somewhere, man, let's just make sure we listen to it. Take it in, take some time to receive it. And if it, if there's any direction or guidance in it, any instruction, my 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 encouragement to you and whoever else listens to this video is to just do exactly what the word says to do. Listen to the instruction. Listen to the direction. 
and just get it done. Make up in your mind. I'm going to do it. That's it. That's it. That's, that's it for today, guys. We went through the other half of John chapter 5. This was a very interesting chapter. We learned so much. And I just pray that we, we just keep on doing this every single week, just dwelling more into the word, learning more. The Bible is so crazy, full of all this information, and I'm here ready to receive it. Uh, I'm going to do the ending prayer, then I'm going to close out. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We thank you for the day that you have made. I will rejoice and begin it, God. There's so many words to describe how wonderful, how holy, how worthy you are, God. Here today, we came together to be able to just discuss your word, God. We pray that we receive the word that you're trying to give us today, God. We pray that the will that you have for us, we'll be able to listen and follow with God. We pray that we'll be able to wake up in a day and just say to ourselves, what God want me to do today. Let me do what God want me to do today and not really focus on what I want to do today, God. Let us pay more attention to you, God. Let us rejoice more in you, God. Let us involve you in every decision making in our life, God. Because, God, you want us to involve you in every single thing, God, because you're capable of doing every single thing, God. We just pray that you continue to be with us, and we pray that we stick with you, God. We pray that you keep us in the right track, and we keep ourselves in check at all times, God. In Jesus' name, bless the name, God. Amen. Guys, we'll be, we'll be back next week with John chapter 6. That's it for the video. Please like, subscribe. Peace.